my pleasure today to welcome uh, Dr. Jason Kutch, who's going to update us about research in his lab. I actually looked this up and Jason has been with us for 10 years now. Uh, he's an associate professor. He's uh, a, an exceptional teacher and as you'll see, a very creative scientist. So Jason, take it away. Thanks very much, Dr. Gordon. And uh, thanks for the opportunity to share a little summary of my research. You know, the, uh, so I'm Dr. Jason Kutch. I direct the Applied Mathematical Physiology Laboratory in the division. Uh, the mission of the division is to enhance human health and quality of life. Uh, and the way that I contribute to that is by researching ways to help people live with less pain. Uh, if you have questions uh, or are interested in our research, uh, you can reach out to me by email uh, or find me on, on Twitter. Uh, so what we do and some of the questions that we're most interested in uh, related to chronic pain are to move from symptom-based diagnoses for pain to more mechanism-based diagnoses of pain, which will enable personalized medicine. Pain is a really big deal. It's a very impactful problem, and I'm very honored to have the ability to work on it. One of the other things that we're doing is working on identifying reliable neuromarkers, and for me, that's brain activity markers, as well as other biomarkers, such as inflammation, to better understand the interplay and interaction between peripheral and central disease in patients with chronic pain. And lastly, I'll say a little bit about it. We're working to better apply targeted neuromodulation to patients that are most likely to benefit. And my vision in, in the long term is that this is something that will be used in conjunction with physical therapy. My funding sources are the primary source that funds the work in my lab is the National Institutes of Health, specifically the National Institute of Diabetes, Digestive and Kidney Diseases, or NIDDK. Uh, we've also enjoyed support from the Charles D. and Mary Bauer Foundation. This funds some of the research that Dr. Mishner and I are doing on persistent shoulder pain. I've had the privilege of working with many great people in the lab and don't have time to mention everybody, but the, uh, one of the primary people uh, that work in my lab is uh, Dr. Mohabiani, who's a new research faculty member, and he's had a big influence on a lot of the studies that I'll, I've done and the couple that I'll highlight here. Uh, one of the big questions we're interested in is what is centralized pain? What makes pain particularly persistent and particularly difficult? A lot of people suspect is that it's actually a neuroplastic process in the brain. My collaborator at the University of Michigan, Dan Claw, who's pictured there, has presented a very nice analogy for centralized pain using electric guitar. So normally electric guitar, think of that as the sensory system. It makes a very sweet sound. Uh, but there's a couple ways you can make it make a very nasty sound. One is you could hit on the strings really hard. The other is you could dial up the amplifier. And so if you're hitting on the strings really hard and that's making a nasty sound, in the pain analogy, we would call that either nociceptive or neuroplastic uh, or nociceptive or neuropathic pain. But if that nasty sound is coming from this, the amplifier being turned up, we call that centralized pain. In this analogy, it's really the central nervous system uh, processing pain differently. We've done a lot of work uh, trying to identify what the neural mechanism is for centralized pain. I'll show you a little animation here. We've been mapping how the clusters of, net of locations in the brain that encode pain, we've been mapping how they interact with the rest of the brain, specifically with sensory motor cortex. So here you can see motor cortex and sensory cortex I'm going to blow up the brain here so you can still see those. And then I'm going to unfold it and zoom in on it. And so now we can see uh, motor cortex on the top and sensory cortex on the bottom. And this map here is in a perfectly healthy individual. This is showing you how different areas of sensory motor cortex interact with the pain network. So if you think back to the homunculus, here we have the face representation, then the upper limb representation, then the trunk representation, and then the lower limb representation and the pelvic representation. And you can see by glancing at this that even in a perfectly healthy individual, the way that your sensory motor representation talks to those regions of the pain network is not uniform. So it's really high for the face, really high for the trunk and really high for the pelvic and relatively low for the limbs. 
And what we've shown is this, this pattern gets even more exaggerated in patients that have phenotypic markers of widespread pain, uh, which is most notably uh, widespread pain on the body map or centralized pain. So uh, you can see there's a, there's a kind of a correspondence between those areas that are hot here and those where patients tend to develop pain. And sure enough, this connectivity pattern gets exaggerated in patients with uh, chronic widespread pain. Another thing we're doing is working on brain-based therapeutics. So I have an R01 currently with Dr. Larissa Rodriguez here at USC to apply non-invasive neuromodulation for uh, patients with chronic pelvic pain. Uh, and the very exciting thing here is we published a preliminary study showing proof of concept that we could actually, by stimulating supplementary motor area, we could modulate pelvic floor tone, which is a common therapeutic target for physical therapy treating pelvic floor disorders. And by choosing the stimulation sequence, we could either turn up the, uh, the activity in the brain and turn down the tone or vice versa. So we think this may have a lot of implications, not only for pelvic pain disorders, but for uh, other pelvic floor disorders, including incontinence and an overactive bladder syndrome. So just to quickly summarize the things we're interested in, computational brain mapping, centralized pain, brain-based therapeutics, and finally, pelvic floor disorders. So thank you for the opportunity to share this summary with you.